Seraphine Support Guide. Starting with runes. Areas for a poke page. Look for short Q and auto attack trades. I like to run biscuits as it allows me to spam my abilities early in lane and not run out of mana. A good option can be bone plating and revitalize for scaling. I use Guardian as a survival page. It's very good versus engage lanes or very high damage lanes. I go monoflow ban on Seraphine as it stops you from going oom um as often. But biscuits and free boots can be a great option also if you want to spam very early in lane. Glacial is not a very conventional page, but it's actually very good if you have an ADC who is very strong and wants to all in and burst the enemy. For example, pair it with a Callista and she can run the enemy down with the slow. On top of that, I would almost always take exhaust with this page as it allows you to exhaust into E to set up a glacial route. A good option can be bone playing revitalize for scaling and early defense. The build I personally like to run is Spell Thieves with CDR Boots. For my first item, I like to rush Rylize. Rylize is interesting on Seraphine. It makes it so that her E will always root no matter what, and if it's a double E, it'll be a root into a stun. This is not the most common build on her, it's just something I like, and you can sub this out with any of the Enchanter Mage items below if wanted. For my Mythic, I like to go Moonstone, as Seraphine has very long range and can continuously proc it throughout a teamfight. For more mobility, you can get Shirelias, and if you're the solo AP on your team and need to pressure a frontline, I like to get Leandris. The final item, I like to go anti-heal, as if games go long enough, you're almost always going to need anti-heal on your team, finishing off with a Wardstone. Any of these Enchanter Mage items are great items on Seraphine, and you can sub them into this build at any point if you want. For ability order, I have Poke and Survival builds. On my Poke, I usually take Q into E into W as I'm looking for some early game Poke and maxing my Q just looking to poke the enemy out in lane. Always max your W second as it increases the heal, the shield, and reduces the cooldown. For Survival, I like to take Q into W level 2 as if the enemy tries to engage on me level 2, having a speed boost and shield for your ADC is very strong. And a lot of times I like to max my W into these lanes, making it so that my shield and speed boost and heals are up more often to either sustain or disengage fights, with maxing my Q second, and finally E last again. Level 1, abuse your Q range to get poked down and use empowered autos to trade. Using your empowered E, you can make picks and use your W to stop the enemy from turning too much damage back on yourself. Here we hit an empowered E, which allows our Lucian to go all in. Their Kai'Sa does escape, but we're able to then turn and get the Nami instead, giving us a free kill and snowballing our lane. Holding your ulti for the right moment can be really clutch, as in this scenario, we get ganked by a jungler, but we're able to turn the fight with our ulti and get a kill. Using Shirelias and W, you can get out of sticky situations, and using empowered W, we can heal up poke our team is taken. Comboing your alt with flash can be used to dodge abilities or hit nasty alts that can end games. If you made it to the end, like, comment, subscribe to help out the algorithm, and check out my Twitch as I stream 5 days a week and would love to meet you.